Let's talk about masks in SETI Astro Suite Pro. Welcome to SETI Astro. All right, I think this will be a, a fairly quick video. I've made other mask videos too, but it, the, the subject seems to come up quite, quite a lot still. Uh, so let's talk about masks in SETI Astro Suite Pro. How to how to use them, manipulate them, things like that. Those of you familiar with uh, the original SETI Astro Suite version two, there was like mask slots and image slots and how they interacted. All that's completely gone. Just chuck that out of your head. There's there's no need for any of that in SETI Astro Suite Pro. So in SETI Astro Suite Pro, any image could be a mask for any other image. There's there's no delineation. You could just you could you could even use the image to mask itself. So let's let's go into these on how to do masks in SETI S Suite Pro. I'm just gonna open up a, a quick little image here. It'll be easy to demonstrate on what's going on. So we have our image here. A way to create masks is just clicking the mask creation button. Now this allows you to do a bunch of th different things in here. Uh, you could freehand draw things, you can select the whole image. Selecting the whole image is really good if you're doing things like star masks, color masks, range selection masks, th things of that nature. Or you can, you know, just have a, a very small area in here where you still want to do those those same things in here. So it's really, really up to you. I'm going to select the whole image. If you click range selection, now you can see how that works. I have a whole video on range selection. If we're going to do a chrominance mask, you could just do that. There's a there's a blur. Maybe we just want a red mask. Then you can click preview mask. And here's all the areas that are red in our image. With And then it's blurred by that amount. So if you click push as a new document, it's just going to ask you for a mask name. It could be anything. It could be red. It could, you could just leave it as mask. It, it, do, it doesn't matter what this name really is. And now we have a new image over here that just says red mask. To apply the mask, shift click this little icon here and just drag it over. Now you're gonna see a little square. That means there's a mask applied. And control K will actually show the overlay of, of the mask. You could also go up to masks and show the overlay, hide the overlay, invert the mask, you can see it's uh, now inverted. Control Shift I also inverts the mask. So now things like curves are only gonna affect those masked areas. So like these were the, the areas where, where our mask was. And when you're doing things like color masks, you know, maybe, maybe that's a great opportunity. You just wanna just bump up like the chroma or something in that, in that particular colored area. So that's, that's one way. You have another image over here. This is your mask. You can close it. You gotta still remove the mask. They're not, they're not linked. So, you know, be sure to turn off your mask. But like I said, any image can be a mask to any other image. We could just make a duplicate of this. If you shift click and hold this over, that's the mask now. So all the bright areas here are gonna be bright points in the mask. All the dark areas are gonna be dark points in the mask. It's literally just a lightness mask you put on the image. If you're just going to do a lightness mask or an inverted lightness mask, you could just mask itself. If you shift click this little thing and just drag it onto the image itself, it's going to put a lightness mask of itself on the image. Now, if you control shift I, that's going to invert the mask or again up here, invert the mask. And you could show and hide the mask. Now we have an inverted lightness mask so I got a larger image here. May, hopefully it'll be easier to see. And maybe we want to do an inverted lightness mask to pull down the darker areas. So I'm just going to shift click this thing and just drop it on it. Now we masked it by itself. Control shift I is going to invert our mask. Again, you can do control K to show and hide the mask. And now if I give a good pull down on curves, it's going to protect the bright areas a lot more. It's going to allow it to be affecting the dark area a lot more. So an inverted lightness mask will, you know, affect the darks of your image. And in that quick, I just was able to apply an inverted lightness mask. I didn't open any mask creation, nothing like that. And I pulled curves down to really make uh, 
in this case Andromeda, pop out from the background. And again, here here's the before, and there is there is the after. No mask creation was necessary because we could use any image to be a mask for any other image, including itself. So I think that's where a lot of power is going to be in City Astro Suite Pro with masks. Not only do you have the full suite of mask creation tools at your fingertips, like your freehand, ellipses, range selection, lightness, chromatis, star masks, all your different color masks, but you could even use the image itself or other images to mask. So this is going to allow you to do some really fun things. Like we have our Eagle Starless in 4X. I have my narrowband to RGB stars here. And this is just the hydrogen data from the Eagle. You can use the hydrogen data to create a mask to help put the stars back in to really make the nebula pop a little bit. So we could do it two ways. We could invert our Eagle Starless view and then mask it, or apply the mask and invert the mask. I'm gonna do it that way because I don't wanna to touch our image over here. So I'm gonna shift click and just drag over to our 4X over here. And now if you show and hide the mask, you can see that, but control shift I will invert the mask. So here's the before and then after the inversion. So all that area in the nebula, it's going to protect from adding stars in. So now we have this mask on there. If we wanna screen them in, lots of ways to do it in SAS Pro again. There's the add stars, there's image combination, there's pixel math, there's layers. I'm just gonna click add stars. And click apply. And now when we zoom in, we can see that the stars in the bright areas of the nebula are suppressed and they're showing more in the dark areas in the nebula and that's just one way to make the nebula itself more prominent by making the stars less prominent uh, you know by using something like this as a mask and for those of you that like layers let's go ahead and make sure our view is selected to our eagle 4x let's just drag and drop our stars over here we're going to want to screen them in and we want to apply our mask and uh, since this is a color image you're going to have to select luminance and we can invert the mask as well here too and now you can just see exactly what this is doing in real time between a not inverted and inverted mask where we're going to suppress the the stars and the bright areas of the nebula Merge layers, push to view, and we're done. Sa same result as if uh, we applied the mask this, this other way. So masks in SETI Astro Suite are going to be very, very, very powerful things. And you have to dispel it in your head that you need um, special like mask images. Any single image can be a mask to any other image, including itself which is where the power really comes in when you're trying to mask and adjust your images uh, for post-processing. Well, I hope this helps clear up some things about masks in SETI Suite Pro. Please comment, like, and subscribe.